If you uh, want to really see something that said, take a look at what happened. Oh. Within minutes of beginning his speech to a rally crowd in Butler, Pennsylvania, Saturday, former President Donald Trump reacts to loud pops of gunfire by ducking down. More than a dozen shots were heard during the chaos. Secret Service says the shooter is down, then goes to move the president to safety. Let me get my shoes. Let me get my shoes. Got, got you, sir. I got you, sir. Let me get my shoes, sir. Hold that in your head. Bloody. Sir, we got to move to the bus. Let me get my shoes. Okay. Let's shoot down. All right. Let's shoot. Watch out. As he gets up, Trump raises his fist in the air as blood runs down his face. The rally crowd cheers as he is escorted to his armored car. All we know was shots were fired, and then I jumped over the, the barrier and put my hand on the guy's head that was confusing who, who was it? Do you know? I, I know. It, this is not Trump, though. This is another person. Yeah. So Trump's not here. And it was, you said he, he got hit on his head? Yeah. Did you see, Did you were you in the vicinity of where Trump was? I was on, I was on the side. I was a special guest. So Are you okay? Was, yeah. I'm, I'm Rico Ralmore, but I, I just... Military reactions. Yeah. One rally attendee died, two others were critically injured. Witnesses described the horror of the moment. Some report seeing the shooter before he pulled the trigger. He's going down! President Biden takes the podium from Delaware, condemning the violence. Look, there's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. After seeking treatment at a local hospital for a gunshot wound to his ear, Trump arrives at his home in New Jersey. He plans to attend the Republican National Convention within a few days. This evening we had what we're calling an assassination attempt against our former president, Donald Trump. It's still an active crime scene. As I mentioned, we have a number of agents on scene. We also are working closely with other federal agencies, our state partners, and our local police partners as well. The FBI announces its investigation into the failed assassination as security experts question how the gunman could have accessed the rooftop near the rally. When I say that something like this cannot happen, we are speaking of a failure. We are going to analyze through an independent review uh, how that occurred, why it occurred, and make recommendations and findings to make sure it doesn't happen again. The shooter's identity is released. Thomas Matthew Crooks, a 20-year-old from Bethel Park, Pennsylvania, is identified by the FBI using DNA. I just know he was, he was bullied. He was, I don't want to say he was an outcast, but he was... You know how kids nowadays, like, he didn't dress like everyone else, so everyone kind of put a target on him, sat alone in lunch. Investigators report he had no criminal history. Crooks was a registered Republican who had recently donated a small amount to a progressive cause. President Biden takes the podium from the White House Sunday afternoon. Good afternoon. As I said last night, there is no place in America for this kind of violence or any violence for that matter. Biden addresses his plans to review all security measures. As this investigation continues, here's what we're going to do. First, Mr. Trump is a former president and nominee of the Republican Party, already receives a heightened level of security. And I've been consistent in my direction of the Secret Service to provide him with every resource, capability, and protective measure necessary to ensure his continued safety. Second, I've directed the head of the Secret Service to review all security measures for the all security measures for the Republican National Convention, which is scheduled to start tomorrow. And third, I've directed an independent review of the national security at yesterday's rally to assess exactly what happened. And we'll share the results of that independent review with the American people as well. Trump's campaign launches a GoFundMe account raising millions for those injured in the shooting. The murdered attendee at Trump's rally is ID'd as an ex-volunteer fire chief and girl dad, Corey Comparator.
David Hutch and James Copenhaver were also injured, but are recovering from their wounds. Former President Trump deplanes in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, to prepare for the Republican National Convention. President Biden addresses the nation from the Oval Office. My fellow Americans, I want to speak to you tonight about the need for us to lower the temperature in our politics. And to remember, while we may disagree, we are not enemies. We're neighbors, we're friends, co-workers, citizens, and most importantly, we're our fellow Americans. We must stand together. Former U.S. Ambassador and former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who challenged Trump in the primary, announces plans to join her party in Wisconsin. As the Republican National Convention begins, lawmakers across the political spectrum call for unity. My hope is that we can work across the aisle um, to sustain a more positive view um, and to sustain the sort of nation we need to be. We have to be better than this moment. Uh, our focus needs to be on national unity as we move forward in, in this election. Um, we, we can't let this violence uh, win and divide us. This is a moment for America to bring people together. And that responsibility weighs heavily, not just on me, but I believe on members of both sides of the aisle. And we're seeing that it takes a little bit of time. Um, we're only two days out, out after the shooting, but I believe you'll see more of that unifying message in the days, weeks, and months ahead. Our country needs it. I'm now convinced that the greatest threat to this nation is not some foreign adversary. It's the growing tribalism and hate within our own country where we find it hard to recognize that the lines that divide us are not nearly as strong as the ties that bind us. In fact, that we need each other. No side is gonna vanquish the other. We have to find ways to build common ground and to find common cause. That's America at its best, and frankly, it's the America that the world needs.